good afternoon today is Monday this is my check-in today's video is going to be on the um, waterfowl festival because I had like two or three other videos on waterfowl festival in Eastern Maryland 2023 and I did not label them as such so nobody's gonna know um, so the festival is actually over because it's Monday. It started Thursday. It went Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I do live right in town, excuse me, um, of Easton. Sorry, it's my tea time. Um, Maryland. And I lived here last year, but I was injured. So if I even walked around, I would have been on crutches. So I probably didn't walk around unless I had a doctor's appointment. Which I, ooh, I have a doctor's appointment in a couple hours. Um, I'm gonna go and grab, I'll wait till the end. I also showed you, I thought I showed you the, um, it's called Attraction Magazine. And let me turn my ringer on, guys. Ooh, I missed a call, oh my gosh. Um. Oh gosh, this thing says I have an appointment at noon. I was like, oh, it's 107. I was like freaking out. That's not today. That scared the life out of me. I anticipated I attended I didn't really attend the festival on uh, insight in 2021 that was also right in town I didn't really know anything about it I didn't really hear about it and what happened was I just um, ran my errands I guess and I worked for Queen Anne's County uh, Parks and Rec as a landings in um, fishing piers uh, park ranger and I was gone I worked Thursday Friday Saturday I used to work Sundays but I had a conflict a couple conflicts so it's kind of hard it's like you could do you could work Thursday Friday Saturday and I'd have somebody else do the Sunday and Monday shifts and as an exchange it's kind of crazy because you miss Friday if you work all day and evening Friday and all morning Saturday. My partner might go home. You miss events. You miss farm farmers markets. You miss um, parades and all that stuff. So I missed stuff on 2021, but we were walking around and I was seeing all the people enjoying the stuff in town. But then I heard that there was <coughs> events at the school so we drove over to the high school um i think they had him at the not next to high school i forget what it's called not at the high school this year but anyway so we tried to go to the bay street ponds and the events were over and then we went to go buy a ticket on sunday afternoon and they're like it's only going on for like an hour and a half so i don't know how we managed the ticket thing that year so we got to see the dogs jump and um In a pool, not in a pond. And we got to see the bird um, show and look at some of the shops. So this year I looked at the price and it was $25 each. So I got priced out and I was disappointed because if I wanted to spend $50, I would have potentially like bought some, if they had some organic cotton waterfowl socks, I would have bought them for people because our socks get old and that's what I like to do at Christmas, but I, I couldn't, it would have had to have been one or the other, right? Um, and I should be neither. So I felt priced out. I felt like it's not a, an event that's advertised to populations of people that's diverse. And that feels hard because most events here, I feel like it's like that and they're going to advertise and 
to certain populations. It's like if I'm advertising my medical clinic and I want to, uh, people with certain diverse, uh, like say people that are open to integrative healthcare, I would have to think about, oh, I see pediatrics. Which population am I going to put my ads in that magazine or in, on that TV show or on, in, on that bulletin board at that school or the, you know, kids gymnastics, like, so you think that my, but my, but my demographic is not, um, really been selected. It might not have made a difference, but it seemed that if you pre-ordered the tickets before a certain date, you would have gotten it cheaper. So I didn't know that until like two weeks afterwards, um, a week afterwards. So there was a lot of people, first of all, there was a lot of food stands. That was interesting. This is the first time that I actually saw them use porta potties. Maybe they had them before and I didn't notice them, but I actually saw that with hand washing stations. That's good because that's, there's a lot that this town, it's like, you need to come, come from somewhere expensive to go somewhere expensive to, or in order to use bathrooms or parking spots or, you know, and I feel like that's I guess the parking, you have to pay to park mainly, but I think that's hard. That, like, you want to be able to go in to a town or go to a park and be able to have it accessible and inclusive. But people don't want things inclusive, really. A lot of people don't. So that's why things stay the way they stay, because they want to attract a certain um, thing that's kind of line pocketbooks. And that's what I should be doing with my store and my other businesses is, hey, people are wanting to, it's not necessarily exploiting people, but say, like me, oh, we're wanting to get um, their kid a new backpack or something because the other one's broken. Why not provide something like that when people say, hey, we have a habit of buying stuff for the holidays or whatever, you know? So that fourth quarter thing is real from sales, a sales point of view. and. People are eager to, they're not being tortured to, to spend money. So I kind of wish I had like a clinic where I could set up like sessions, like 15 minute sessions for certain uh, like hands on procedures. I wish I could have uh, had that opportunity to also, also I would have liked to have been able to advertise um, my services and the fact that I do house calls. and. I feel like I want to be able to go to the festival one year and to learn more about this area and also the indigenous folks that were here and um, the black folks that were brought here against our will that were able at one time to do waterfowl um, as a way of bringing home their dinner and not necessarily to retrieve things because the person who enslaved other persons like made them do it but the indigenous people here before us all before those groups that I just talked about were doing things a certain way and maintaining this land to be fertile like us in being a, having the ability to live off the land without the grocery stores and without all these regulations and private property and no you can't use this or you have to buy this, it's $2 million, or you have to rent this, but what is the inclusivity of it? Or somebody wants to get something. I, I don't eat meat, I've eaten meat in the past, I've eaten game a little bit, like um, just a very little bit. And if it got to a point where I need to go back to that, it would be nice to know more information about the actual process of hunting you know, and of um, getting something that you can get sustenance on and that in my mind that's what it is and I really like art I really like music but I feel like it's festival's not made for me to conclude someone threw a huge stick at me I say a stick or like a big piece of wood at me they missed my head by not much because I was walking away and Someone also looked straight me straight in the eye, and I go, "This kid looks like this white kid looks like he's gonna trip me, trip one of us." 
and he did. He tripped my partner, and some other guy came up to me and said, oh, he didn't see him. Yes, he did. He looked right at us. He looked me right in the eye, and I, I knew to watch his feet. And I hear stumbling behind me, and I didn't really hear the whole story, and I don't, I didn't, I wanted to, like, call the police on the person who hit me, or try to hit me with a stick. But I was looking around, as a black woman in a southern town during a waterfall festival, and I feel like people already want to talk garbage to me when I'm walking around, getting ready to go to work. I work as a doctor, get ready to see patients, drive across the state to see patients. I want to check my mail because I also own a store that I have to take mail in, do, check my P.O. box. I'm just a businesswoman. I'm just a professional here, minding my business, always trying to think. It's not about exploiting people. It's about helping people and getting paid more, a fair wage for it. There's plenty of boutique doctors that charge a lot more, but for my services, I want to get a fair wage and be able to take care of myself so that I'm not needing to be oh, on welfare and that I am able to donate more after I get out of debt. So I wish that there was more, but because I hadn't seen the whole festival as far as the education and the history of the land, I can't tell you whether that's missing or not because I will need to actually get a um, ticket. Let me get the book. It's available free online. If you look, Attraction, The Good News Magazine, November 2023. It's got a bunch of ads. Things. I went through this on one of my other videos last week if you want to find that video. But the pictures also are not very um, inclusive. This was for sale for from 4000 to almost $14,000 per statue, if you want it. It's prepay, so it's probably sold. But one day I want to be a person who can actually get myself in a magazine like this and offer my services. They have Mace Hopkins Day, that's nice. History of Jewish Deli. So they do have a tiny bit of um, little eighth of a page of some diverse things but it's not about me and I make it about me because I feel excluded but I really love learning history of different areas and I really love seeing different people enjoying their weekends and having family time and getting a break from the norm but I don't like people seeing me go outside my house and being tripped and th having big sticks thrown at my head I'm a human being. I'm here as a healthcare provider and a birth worker and someone who wants to sell items that don't trigger allergies and all this. And it just hurts my heart when I come in peace for a peace sign. And people aren't peace with me. That looks pretty messy. I should have fixed that. Oh, anyways, I come in peace and I want to enjoy. And as far as my history, I grew up on a small lake in Oscoda, Michigan, which the whole town is on a big lake and a river. And I grew up fishing with my neighbors always hunting. We grew up, I went to um, camp, Camp Nisikani as a very young child. I, even, I was so young, maybe first grade, maybe five years old, four years old, and we learned how to use bows and arrows. I went to middle school three years. We had to learn how to use bows and arrows, or we had archery for gym class, outdoors in the cold, and then we went um, cross-country skiing and ice, uh, not ice skating. Um, I did ice skate, by the way, because I had a lake in my backyard. I had... Um, Snowshoeing was part of our curriculum. Swimming was part of curriculum. And then, um, I think, oh, we learned, oh, sorry. Did I learn archery at, as a little kid? We learned um, BB guns and stuff. And I asked my dad if I and my parents, can I go hunting? Can I, can I shoot the gun? Can I shoot targets? They said, no, 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 no. 
So I actually joined Fisheries and Wildlife Club um, with my sweet mate in college, and we were we took hunter safety, and we shot all the guns except for the muzzle loader, and we learned a lot about fisheries and wildlife. And I was a fisheries and wildlife major for a while, and then I was like, I don't know what I was at first. So I was fisheries and wildlife, and then okay, agriculture, natural resource communications. So I really love learning about the land, and I was just always outside as a kid. I had to come in for dinner. But I just loved being in the woods and I loved holding on to wild birds and catching fish with my hands and being in the water with the with the mallard ducks and being able they used to lay their eggs I didn't see the eggs but we had bushes right our huge back window and the mallards would always bring their babies in and out of those bushes right next to the house which was three levels up from the actual lake so they pretty much live <laughs> amongst us. And that's how I grew up from age uh, almost two to uh, 17. And I went back as an adult for another year. And just watching people hunt and wearing orange because I'm scared of getting shot. And I'm not a deer just because I'm brown. And seeing deer on top of cars, like I'm pretty much vegan now. But and that was like the norm. and walking from my friend's house to go to the lake and walking through people's yards, which probably drove them crazy, and having deer hanging outside. <laughs> and we're like, ah, like what? <laughs> like, that's just how I grew up and how our friends hunting and hunting season opened and they shut the whole school system down um, in our town because too many people and teachers, kids and teachers were gonna be absent. So we had like a long weekend or whatever day it opened that my, art teacher was gone for at least a week so that was hunting and fishing was normal my grandma and her family members are really good at fishing and I used to love eating fish by the way oh. even if it was that rainbow trout run guys that's I grew up my relatives were mainly city folks but I grew up up north and I watched Kyle's cabins and watched them hunting and fishing and I would like to supply my family with uh, fresh food like that and make my garden so I I really um, am sad that I feel like I'm not included in the events in this town but I would like to save up the money to go maybe next year or the year after peace guys if you went let me know in the comments what's your favorite um, attraction and you can um, I know they had them I think they had them on Facebook but there's some videos around that show maybe some stuff from last year and maybe some drone shots and different things from this year. So you can try to look and see. Um, my favorite would be to see um, geese, live geese and the dog stuff is really what I would prioritize. And um, maybe that birds of prey thing again, but I really like the animal things and I would love to hear the geese call contest. Peace guys.